Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com, and today I want to share with you how to quickly and easily film with the S-Log3 picture profile in your Sony camera. So if you're a run and gun filmmaker like me that films weddings or documentaries where you don't have full control over your lighting and you don't have time to use something like a gray card, this video will show you how to get great exposure very fast. To save you time though, and to make this picture profile super easy to film with, I've actually created a set of video presets called Who Is Matt LUTs that I've created and tested specifically to work with S-Log3. I will link to those LUTs down in the video description. I also want you to know that I'm working on an easy color grading tutorial specifically for S-Log3, so please subscribe if you want to see that soon. Getting started now, first off we need to answer the question, can your camera handle filming in S-Log3? Because this is important. Even if your camera shows S-Log3 as an option in the menus, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's capable of properly recording with the picture profile. In short, if you're using one of Sony's newer cameras like the A7S III, FX3, FX3, FX6, A1, etc. Basically, any Sony camera that's capable of recording video in 10 bit, your camera can handle S Log 3. But if you're filming with an older Sony camera, like the A7 III, A6600, A6500, 6400, etc., I would not recommend S Log 3. And I actually have a different picture profile that I would recommend for you. I will link to my video about that picture profile in the corner and down in the video description. Now that you know your camera is capable of recording in S-Log3 properly, let's dive into the nitty gritty of this picture profile. Grab your Sony camera. In my case, I'm using the A7S III. Navigate to the picture profile menu. And the first thing you should do is make sure that your camera is set to PP8 and that for gamma, it says S-Log3 and the color mode says S-Gamut3.Cine. If it doesn't say that, scroll down to the bottom to the option that says reset and reset PP8 to its default settings. I would highly recommend filming with PP8, but if you've scrolled around in the picture profile menu, you'll notice that PP9 also says S-Log3, with the only difference being the color mode says S-Gamut3 instead of S-Gamut3.Cine. While there's not a huge difference between these two picture profiles, it's going to be easier for you to color grade footage filmed with S-Gamut3.Cine. So that's why I would recommend PP8 instead of PP9. Moving on, let's talk exposure. One of the biggest complaints that I've heard from filmmakers over the years is that S-Log3 is a noisy picture profile. Filmmakers will record footage in S-Log3, but when they color grade it, the image looks really noisy, almost like the camera is at a high ISO, even if the ISO is set quite low. If this has happened to you, the reason you're seeing this noise even at low ISOs is because you have not exposed S-Log3 properly. Unlike a standard picture profile that already has saturation and contrast baked in, S-Log3 is a log picture profile, meaning that it's flat and you're going to need to add that contrast and saturation later whenever you color grade. So how do you expose S-Log3 so you don't get a noisy image? Well, this may seem a bit counterintuitive, but you actually want to overexpose your footage when filming. Then when you color grade, you bring the footage exposure back down when you add contrast and saturation. The reason many filmmakers are seeing noise with their S-Log3 footage is that they're doing the opposite of this. They're filming their footage too dark and then bringing up the exposure, which is going to introduce noise to the image. Going back to your camera now, looking at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see your shutter speed, lens aperture, and the letters MM and a number. In my case, it says 0.0. .0. This MM stands for multi-metering, and it tells you how bright the image is that your camera is recording. If your camera doesn't say MM here, open the menu and go to exposure slash color, metering, and set your metering mode to multi. With a traditional camera picture profile, you would want your camera's metering number next to MM to read 0.0, .0 which means that the image it is recording isn't over or underexposed. If your camera says minus 1.0, it means that it is one stop underexposed. If it reads plus 1.0, it means it's one stop overexposed. But remember, we're shooting in S-Log3, and you need to overexpose it to make sure it's properly recording. So you're actually going to want your camera's metering to read between 1.7 and 2.0 stops over. This is going to look bright, but I promise you this is how your S-Log3 footage will look its best. Also be careful, because when I say 1.7 to two stops over, you're going to want to make sure that that two isn't blinking. 
If it's blinking, that means that it's over two stops and that's a bad thing because it's too bright. Now, to help you out with exposure and make sure you aren't overexposing your footage, I would highly recommend using zebras and not the African animal. I'm referring to the zebra setting of your camera. Zebras will tell you if your footage is overexposed by putting these nice black and white lines that kind of look like zebra stripes on the overexposed parts of your image. You will need to calibrate these zebra stripes to work properly with your S-Log3 footage though. Incidentally, if you've watched my Sony camera menu and custom button setup videos and downloaded my Sony presets, you already have your zebra setup for S-Log3. If you haven't watched those yet, I will link them up in the corner and down in the video description. In case you haven't downloaded those settings though, here's how to set up your zebras properly. Go into your camera's menu, go to exposure slash color, zebra display, and for zebra level, you're going to want to go down to C2 so you can set a custom zebra level. Press right and select lower limit, then press right again and change the number to 94 plus. Next, make sure zebra display in the menu is turned on. And as you start to bring up the exposure of your camera, either by changing your aperture or ISO, you're going to notice zebra lines appearing on the overexposed parts of your footage. Because you set your zebra level to 94 plus, that number matches up with the maximum brightness that S-Log3 footage can handle before it clips the highlights overexposes them and they cannot be recovered. So as you're filming with your camera, I would first look at your metering and make sure it's between 1.7 and two stops over. And then I would look for any zebras to appear on the screen. If they show up, that could be an issue, but it really comes down to what you're filming. If you're filming a person standing in front of the sunset and you have the super bright sun and clouds behind them, you will probably see some zebras in the background and that's okay. But if you're seeing zebras on the person's skin, that means that your footage is definitely too bright and your exposure needs to be darker. I would highly recommend filming some test shots with people lit by different light sources. As you gain experience with watching your metering and zebras, you should get a good idea of how the camera is exposing and what looks good. All right, you've got your metering set up and your zebras. The second to last thing we need to talk about is ISO. If you turn your ISO up, your footage gets brighter. If you turn it down, it gets darker. But there are two very important things to keep in mind when it comes to your ISO and S-Log3. Looking at the ISO menu of my A7S III, you'll see that I can actually set my ISO all the way down to 160. But all of these ISOs from 160 to 500 have lines on the top and bottom of the numbers. But when we get to ISO 640, those lines go away. This is because for the A7S III and its cinema camera variant, the FX3, whenever you're recording an S-Log3, the recommended base ISO is 640. This ISO 640 is the ISO that Sony recommends if you want to maximize the dynamic range and footage quality that you're getting from the camera. As I just showed though, you can go lower if you want to down to 160, but you're going to have two issues once you go below 640. The first issue is going to be very obvious. Here's my camera filming at ISO 640 with the zebra showing where the image is overexposed. Drop the ISO to 500 now and you see the issue? The zebras are gone. Yes, if you set your camera below the minimum base ISO, zebras will no longer work and the camera will not be able to tell you which parts of the image are overexposed. This is a huge bummer, but not the only one. The second issue, which is harder to see when filming, but arguably worse, is that if you drop your ISO below the base ISO of 640, the camera is going to start to electronically clip the highlights of your footage at a lower level. Here's a clip filmed in S-Log3 at 640 ISO, where I lowered the exposure from F4 to F8, and then brought the exposure back up to the proper level by lowering my shutter speed. Notice the histogram on the lower right, indicating that the camera is only starting to overexpose once the zebras start to appear at 94 IRE, and the camera's metering says it is overexposed by more than two stops. Now, when I do the same thing, but I instead drop the ISO from 640 to 160, and then bring down the shutter speed again, the histogram on the bottom right now starts to clip the highlights at a much lower level, leading to the footage losing a ton of dynamic range and completely destroying the image. Strangely though, the camera's metering still only reads 1.7 to 2.0 stops over, even though the highlights are completely clipped. So in short, if you drop your ISO below the base ISO of 640, you will not have zebras, and the camera's metering will no longer be accurate. 
meaning I would never recommend filming with your camera below the base ISO. Adjust your aperture, your shutter speed, and consider investing in an ND filter before dropping your ISO. Got it? Okay, we've covered minimum ISO, but we aren't quite done talking about ISOs yet. If you have an A7S III, FX3, or FX6, this is going to be important for you because we need to talk about higher ISOs with these cameras. See, these cameras all share roughly the same sensor. And when they're recording in S-Log3, there are some ISOs that I would recommend avoiding if you want your footage to look its best. Remember how I said earlier that one of the main complaints filmmakers have about S-Log3 is that it can be noisy? I said that usually isn't due to ISO, but I do want you to be aware that ISO can sometimes be the culprit. See, this camera sensor shared by these three cameras has what is known as a dual native ISO. This means there are two ISOs where the camera will look its best and give you the best quality footage. This dual native ISO will change depending on the picture profile you're filming with, but in the case of S-Log3, these ISOs are ISO 640, and ISO 12800. We've already discussed ISO 640, but ISO 12800 is super important too, because while it is a relatively high ISO, it is also incredibly clean with virtually zero grain. Here's my A7S III with the ISO at 2500, cranking it up. And as you'll see, it's getting brighter, but also noisier. Here at ISO 10,000, it's the noisiest. But wait a second, switch it to ISO 12,800 and bang, the footage is clean and doesn't have any noise. So as a final rule of thumb, I would recommend avoiding some of the noisier ISOs when shooting in S-Log3, namely ISO 6400 to 10,000. If you're shooting at ISO 5000 and you need to brighten things up a bit, skip a few ISOs and go up to 12,800 so your image will be cleaner. Now, we have one last thing to talk about, and this is a tool that will really help you when it comes to properly white balancing your S-Log3 footage. Open your camera's menu, go to Setup, Display Option, turn Gamma Display Assist Type to Auto if it isn't already, and then turn Gamma Display Assist on. When you're filming in S-Log3, your camera will now show you a preview that adds contrast and saturation to your footage and shows you what S-Log3 will look like after you've color graded it. To be clear, this is just a preview. Your recorded footage will still be flattened to saturated, but if you want to see how it will look, this is a fantastic feature. Gamma Display Assist is also going to be super helpful to you when you're setting your camera's white balance. Because S-Log3 is so desaturated, it can be difficult to tell if your white balance is set properly, especially if you were filming in a mixed lighting scenario like a wedding or other run and gun documentary style event. I have Gamma Display Assist set to a custom button on my camera, so with a simple button press, I can enable it to increase the saturation of my footage and make sure my colors aren't looking too warm or too cool. You can watch my A7S III setup videos to see how to set up this custom button yourself, or you can save time and download my A7S III setup preset, which will give you all of my settings immediately. I'll link to that preset file and my setup videos below. All right, and that is how to film an S-Log3 quickly and easily. I will also link down below to my S-Log3 color presets if you wanna check those out. If you combine those presets with these settings that we've talked about, your footage is gonna look awesome. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.